Brawling. Michelo. C. Michelo. C. Michelo. Any advice for people trying to start one? Is that a D&D podcast? Yeah, I want? a podcast. I would say don't be discouraged when you first start. Honestly, the podcasts that do well are the podcasts that didn't give up in their first season. You just got to keep at it. Be ready to put in a lot of work. We do a lot of editing, and that means many, many hours with the computer. I'm just trying to make everybody sound pretty. Uh, also, just the writing time, prep time. It's going to be a lot, but it's also a lot of fun. Also, be ready to spend just... This coughing is our dog. She's not sick. She just coughs when she wants attention. <laughs> Daniel, the cryptid king, what are your main tips for a first episode? Make sure that you set up each character to really have an opportunity to shine. shine. Ooh, my is <laughs> Put something big in it. Make something explode. Don't save the good stuff for the end. In D&D, there's got to be something, like, cool in every episode. You have, like, only one episode to really hook someone. She's Kim. I think she's going to die. Courtney. I like that explosion. How do you find good players that work with your DMing? How do you record your stuff? You just have to find somebody that is excited about it more than anything else. More than being D&D experts, we just look for people who we know are going to have a blast because if you're having fun, your audience will have fun. How do you record your stuff? Four microphones. Into an H6 Zoom, uh, which we have a sound engineer as one of our cast members, which is really lucky. I recommend doing that. You record everybody onto a different track. People are gonna be talking over each other. If someone says the important thing, you can isolate it. That's useful. Cabbage bubbles. Were you scared to DM for the first time? It's a nerve-wracking thing, especially if you're doing a homebrew campaign because it's your story, especially if you're not somebody who's used to sharing your ideas. Like, a lot of people are, like, listening to, like, Mad Pod, Critical Role, even Roll for it sometimes, because I think Jake is a great DM. They think they have to be a professional voice actor. That's just so unnecessary to have a good campaign. First time I DM'd was with, like, really close friends. So I figured if we failed, we would fail in a fun way. If you have players that are like really on you for making mistakes, that's not Those that's not your fault. Play with. Yeah, that's <laughs> find new people. What advice could a DM give to players that are hesitant role players but want to act stuff? Just make sure everybody feels comfortable I think being they, weird around each other. I think being goofy yourself, like leading by example. So as a DM, when it comes time to do your character voices, like you better be so over the top. And again, it doesn't have to be a good voice. You no. just have to have fun. It gives everyone else permission to do a voice without worrying about being like a professional voice actor. Because that's not important. It's not important. <laughs> How time consuming is making a podcast? So for Roll For It, we wanted to commit to bite-sized digestible episodes under an hour. And everyone knows that when you play D&D, you've never, no one does an adventure or part of an adventure in under an hour. We probably spend between the two of us 20 hours editing a Roll For It episode. We're lucky to have each other to depend on when work is hard for one or the other in a certain week. I would edit until 3 a.m., and then I would go to sleep, and Jake would wake up at 3 a.m. and go until he has to go to work. Finish the cut before the morning. So you're sleepy for a day, but it's also kind of fun to just be like, wow, I just spent the entire night um, making something cool. Which reminds me, uh, check out our Patreon if you want to support Roll For It. <laughs> we would love to do Roll For It and only Roll For It, uh, so give us three dollars on patreon and then maybe one day we can not stay up till four in the morning on a work night we can dream eggy baby one of our earliest supporters what are some tips for new world builders new world builders if we're talking about DD, let the players join in use their ideas because they love to come back around and see what they thought of and then you just add your own twist to it yeah it's too hard to think of everything yourself. If you have the people who are willing to think of creative choices, use them. Griff Harris, what is your fave magic item? Can be rare, legendary, etc. I don't have a specific one because I'm always making them up as I go, but I just like an item that will pull them away from their goals or pull them towards the bad guys, basically. Jake's favorite magic item is whatever is going to cause the most trouble for our player. Yeah.
Good trouble. Luca on Gina says writing tips. You have your characters, stuff's gonna happen to them, and they're gonna change. You want to think of the character arc, where are they starting and where are they ending up? The character starts out really guarded and jaded, and then by the end they've learned to make connections with people. And so you can base your campaign and your story around, like, how is that going to happen? Like, how are you going to guide that player? This is a good one. Evan DeAngelis says, how do you design a world effectively when counters are randomized? They, like, break our story a little bit every time we roll one. And the fun part is trying to repair it. How do we make this monster fit into what's supposed to be happening in our story? So it's fun for us to be like, this is where we're starting this episode. This is where they need to end. How is this monster going to mess that up for them? Newman, when did you discover D&D and what are your tips for beginners? I guess I originally would have heard about D&D from movies, right? Like... <laughs> so it was probably about 10 years ago I started just like reading books and it took a couple years before I was like you know we could play this don't be intimidated by all the rules and all the stuff that there is to know a good D&D player is one that is creative and commits to their character and has fun D&D is about having fun trying to actually put yourself in the shoes of your character and Imagine this world around you so that you can use it. That torch over there, if I just threw that at this thing, something cool would happen. That's how you find stuff that the DM isn't expecting. Because the DM cannot describe everything that's in a room. You have to fill in the blanks, and that's where the fun stuff is. Last question. Bullmouth says, coolest campaign ever you two played. I'm not just, like, trying to push our podcast, but, like, I really liked season two of Roll For It. Thank you so much for your questions. We like to answer them. We like talking to you guys. You're amazing. Send us more questions. Send, talk to us whenever you want. Yeah, we we spend too much questions. time on Instagram. And we have social media, answers. So. We don't know if they're the right answers, but we have answers. We like to talk. We got intern Boone wants to say hello as well. So this is our intern Boone. Um, he is here to talk about our Patreon. You can join Durbin's pack, Durbin the donkey. He will be really grateful for it. It can be $3 a month, or we just have a donate button in the link in our bio. And if you just want to give us a dollar, because you have one, and then we can keep making all kinds of cool stuff. We're really grateful for anything you can donate, or just, you know, share us around, tell your friends. It's a great show, we think, and we hope you think so, too. Check out our YouTube shows. Hit that like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Smash the like smash button. Smash that like Comment button. Comment and smash that tag button. All right, bro. Share it. Are we hip? Oh, we're so cool. We should be on TikTok. I genuinely don't know what that is.